G'day team, I'm Aaron from Guest Adventures and today we're going on a trip to one of my favourite four-wheel drive playgrounds in uh, the Perth area, Lansman. So Lanslin is about 130 kilometres uh, north of Perth Actual. It takes about maybe an hour and a half uh, drive up the freeway and then onto Indian Ocean Drive uh, from there. Uh, be careful with Indian Ocean Drive though, it's got a bit of a reputation throughout the holiday season to be one of the more dangerous sort of roads in Western Australia. Uh, the town itself is a small fishing town. Uh, it's based on the Western Rock lobster industry and it was named after one of the lead scientists uh, from the French, so Borden's French uh, East India Company voyage in 1801. Initially it was known as uh, Wangari, which is the Aboriginal word for fish. Lancelin itself these days is quite popular for kite surfing uh, and windsurfing. Uh, it's now become quite popular with regard to the off-road sort of industry. Uh, the dunes uh, with you know off-road buggies uh, as well as four-wheel drives and a lot of tourism is uh, generated throughout the area for sandboarding and a lot of um, that kind of like introductory to four-wheel driving type stuff that you sometimes see. You can drive throughout most of the dunes uh, but there are some restrictions to the areas. Um, there is a section that is specifically for defence. Uh, there's the off-road area, there's an area that is utilised by the water core and then there's also some mining and the sand mining is utilised for farmers to put the sand on their fields and what it does, it actually neutralises the acid within the soil. Realistically, the area is very similar to sort of what you will see in Stockton Beach in New, so New South Wales. It's big enough um, to have some fun and keep away and all the industries can kind of work together uh, harmoniously without getting in too much trouble. So we're going to hit down there now. Um, and head through town and let the tires down and we'll meet you in the uh, car park ready to go. We're here now, uh, just airing down at the main car park. Um, it's blowing a bloody gale, so hopefully the noise is okay. But uh, every time I go to the dunes, uh, I always will use 18 psi. Um, for my car, the setup with 18 psi is, is perfect. It's always worked good, and I rarely go uh, beneath that. The easiest way that I um, get the tyres down to that pressure is what they call a storm tyre deflator. So, as you can see there, it's just a little valve that goes onto the end of your actual valve and uh, it's got a spring in it. And basically, once the pressure um, has got to 18, they're preset, um, it will just stop deflating the tyre and then you pull them off. Um, there's not many amenities around here, so there's no toilets or anything like that, like some of the other places. But realistically, what you can do is like when you head into town, um, there's a, a bakery and I'm pretty sure there's like an IGA or something like that um, with a couple of public toilets so if you need any of those nervous ablution breaks prior to hitting the dunes and apparently the flies um, go there first before um, coming here. Where we are now is the main car park so as you can see there's a few two wheelers over there and they're more of the tourist guys that do the sandboarding and stuff like that um, so sometimes it's pretty funny to watch what happens over there um, but otherwise we'll finish up here and head into the dunes.
off-road equipment that we take uh, standard shovel max tracks uh, snatch strap shackles type things like that and obviously one of the best things you can do when you're learning to drive if you need to reverse up <laughs> so you don't get stuck but that's how we all learn right <laughs> Conditions are uh, changed significantly throughout the year and it can be super soft uh, on the beach here uh, Right now, it's not too bad the lower you are the high the high tide mark is pretty bad um, So drive to the conditions and if you need to drop your tires a little further in pressure do so uh, The sand itself can be difficult to see sort of the definition of it So when it's bright around midday because there's no shadows in it You can it's hard to see in the dunes where the actual steep parts are Sometimes, um, like I've literally crashed a car into a dune before because it's been so bright and you can't see it, but um, I was proceeding at a safe speed, so, you know, no damage was done. Um, there are numerous road buggies uh, around here as well, so that's why I, pretty much everywhere I go now, I chuck the sand flag on. I had a near miss one of the first times I was up here with a motorbike that was doing about 90 kilometers an hour. And, uh, and I was coming over June as well in the blind situation and you know we would have been closing each other at about 120 kilometers an hour um, and as a result we now got the flag on Whilst we're driving through here, um, there are some caravan parks around this area um, to stay at. There's no real specific camping places. Well, we're in a bumpy bit. So, it's always are worth booking in prior just because of the, uh, the availability. But here's some of those off-road buggies. Be nice and fun to have one of those. So before I, uh, I head off guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and uh, one more of our local adventures. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Over the next month or so, uh, we've got a fair bit of uh, adventures coming up. So we're heading down to the Southwest in a little over a week, so expect a couple more videos in the near future. Cheers guys, stay safe, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.